All right, back to the final exam review. And now we're on chapter 10, and we're doing 10-5. Lowest common multiple. This stuff is, this stuff, I will not lie, is stuff that gives students a lot of problems. Um, but if you follow the same principles, the real simple principles, you'll be fine. Again, we'll go back to fractions. In this case, we're going to be adding and subtracting fractions with different denominators, and that's where the problem is. But here, we'll start with something simple. One half plus one third. Real simple. But the two and the three aren't the same, so you can't just add them like we did if they were the same. You have to manipulate these things so that you have the same denominator. Well, that means you have to find a common denominator, uh, a lowest common multiple. So we take the factors of two. Well, we've got two and we've got three. Nothing is in common between them, so we just multiply them together and we get six, and that's our lowest common multiple. So six is what we're going to use for a lowest common multiple. And what we do is find out what we have to multiply here to get six. Well, we have to multiply by three here. What we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. And we have to multiply by two here. What we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So that sets it up. We've got on the top three plus two. And three plus two is equal to five. And so our answer is five, six. Now, a lot was going on there. Uh, and if you don't understand it at the simple level, you really got to be practicing more fractions, practicing more of these. I'll even do another one, just maybe a little more difficult uh, to help. You know, hopefully that helps. Number seven is they just, now all they're asking you to do here for this question is find the lowest common multiple. They're not even asking you, they're not even giving you a fraction question yet. Um, so all they're saying just Get, you know, follow your road here. To find the lowest common, it says find the LCM, okay? Well, first of all, you have to factor it. X minus Y, X plus Y, because that's difference of squares, and this is X plus Y. Now that you've factored it, you pick, again, this is what we do. You pick out one of everything that you, ha you can, and when you see it twice, you only pick it once. So x plus y comes out, because it's there, and x minus y comes out, and that is our lowest common multiple. That's what becomes our answer. And if we were working with fractions, that would become the lowest common denominator that we'd move over there and we'd work with. But for these questions on SP28, Skills Practice 28, on number 7, uh, they're just asking you to find the lowest common multiple. Thank goodness. Now, um, we'll do one more of those, and then we'll move back to the fractions, which are more complicated. Okay, so now we're at number 12, and um, we're asked to find the LCM again, the lowest common multiple, 6m cubed n and 9mn squared. So first things first, you break it into factors, prime factors. 6 breaks down into 3 times 2, m cubed breaks into m times m times m, and n breaks just into n. It doesn't break into anything, it just is n. Now over here, 9mn squared, uh, 9 breaks into 3 times 3, those are prime numbers, and then m is alone n times n gives us our n squared. Now what we have to do here, this is the tricky part, let's make a big circle. In that circle, we are going to pull each factor, each factor has to appear in there, okay? The two, the three, the m, and the n, they all have to appear. But we form the product here, okay, the multiplication here, that's what's called the lowest common multiple. We form this product by using each factor the greatest number of time it occurs, okay? So each factor has to be used the greatest number of times it occurs. Three, it occurs once there and twice there, so we're gonna put it in three times three. We're gonna put it in twice. Two appears once there, we have to put that in uh, because it appears once. It didn't appear here, but it doesn't matter. As long as it appears somewhere, you have to put it in. M times M times M, it appears three times here and once here, so you put it in the greatest number of times it appears. So in other words, m times m times m has to go in there. n appears once there and twice there, so we have to put it in here, n times n, all right? So that's our, great, our lowest common multiple. That's common, they're all common. It's a multiple because you multiply them together. And it's actually the lowest one that they'll both divide into, so believe it or not. So this is actually equal to uh, 18 m cubed n squared. That's your answer your lowest common multiple. All right, so it's so important. I think everybody can break these into factors. It's just so important that everybody understands how to make this circle, how to get this actual lowest common multiple right, because that's the tricky part. 
Um, again, you take each factor, the three, the two, the M and the N, all have to be in here. They have to make an appearance. How many times do they occur? The, the, the more, the, if it occurs once here and twice there, you've got to have it in here twice. If it occurs once here, uh, anywhere, just once, it's fine, you put it in here. If it occurs here three times and once there, you've got to put it in three times. The greatest number of times it appears. That's how it works. All right, I'm going to move now to some fractions. And those get a little trickier because you have to next. Okay, in number 19, you're given a fraction 7y minus 1 over 6y minus 2y plus 1 over 3y. First thing you got to do is you've got to sort out this denominator because you can't subtract or add fractions without the same denominator. The way you sort it out is by finding the lowest common multiple with the technique we just showed. 6y and 3y, we write them out, we factor them out, and guess what? 6 times y, those are our factors. It's actually pretty much already broken into factors. The only thing is the 6 is going to be written as 3 times 2. All right, 3 times 2 times y and 3 times y. Now, what do we put into this pool here? We have to show, it appears once there and appears once there, we have to put it in once. We can't put it in more than once, it only appears once. Uh, times 2 it appears once and times y appears, all right, once there and once there. The most it ever appears is once. It doesn't appear as a y squared, so we can't put y squared in here. This is clearly it. This equals 6y and this equals 6y. That is our lowest common denominator, okay? So that's what we put under here, right there. Now that we've put that there, we have to figure out what we have to multiply this by to equal that. In this case, it's only one. That's only one, so that doesn't change much. In this case, we have to multiply by two, and two here. Now it gets tricky here because we have a minus sign in the middle. So we're just gonna clear this away, all right? This part here, hope you got it. We've got to, we've got 7y minus 1, that's pretty straightforward, 7y minus 1, minus, okay, 2 onto this, 2 onto 2y plus 1, all right? So that's going to equal um, 7y minus 1, minus 4y, and minus 2, because we're distributing that onto that and that onto that, over 6y all over 6y. Now we collect like terms, and we're going to go over here and finish this off. Now we're almost there. 7y minus 4y is equal to 7y minus 4y. I'm going to write it out the long way. Minus 1, minus 2, okay, over 6y. But clearly that's equal to 7y minus 4y is equal to 3y, and it's going to be 3y minus 3, because minus 1 minus 2, 6y. Now, this is where your factoring is important. Some people would leave it at that, but no, no, because you recognize that 3 can be factored out. Those of you who are quick with common factors, that's 3 until y minus 1 and over 6y, and then you notice that that 3 goes into the 6. We take it down to lowest terms. It's 1 times y minus 1 over 2. Now, that, was, that combined a lot of steps and a lot of different things. You have to, you've got to know all, math is cumulative. You've got to know your factoring. You've got to know your fractions. You've got to know your distributive, distributive principle here. Uh, boy, a lot of math in there in this question. Even though it looked like pretty harmless, there was a lot of math in there. So study this one over and over.